Hi there, guys. Happy to see you here. And here I am. <laughs> uh, luckily, my hand doesn't need to have any makeup on. Yeah. I'm being lazy. Lazy lady today. Well, as you probably guessed or seen or heard, I got tired of the insects lurking about, destroying my orchids, snagging off the uh, new buds on Cattleya's, eating the new growth, making ugly patches to leaves, spreading like crazy. So I had to put an end to it and went through all my orchids. Here I've got a few orchids that won't catch scale. Perfect pedlums. And that's great, the whole shelf without any scale lurking. But Cattleya's are the favourites, as always. I divided a few orchids, cleaned them all up thoroughly, sprayed them, rinsed them from scale. I've been cutting up bad roots. Yeah, I've been transitioning all of my Cattleya's, and there are a few. I can guarantee you that, so into um, Zebra Hydroponics. I found it a little bit more easy for me to manage and watering and take care of my orchids, my clay orchids especially, when sitting in semi-hydroponics. Now all I have to do is bring my watering can and go over each and every one of them until the water pours out from the hose into a tray. So, that saves me cleansed water, filtrated water amount and time as well as fertilizer. So, um, well, that's been great for me, but I'm a little bit concerned about the blooming, or shall we say the lack of blooms. But um, I believe that in due time, when they are more established, they will take up their normal blooming schedule again. I'm gonna start with these Cattleyas. Ring Cattleyanti, Shing for Little Sun Young Ming Golden Boy from Curl in Orchidine. Yeah, I had it for one and a half years, so about this size, a little bit larger, a few canes larger when I got it. <laughs> you know what? This is the plant today. Yeah? Huge orchid. And the pseudobos were sitting really tightly squeezed into each other. And they were all carrying a lot of scale. I couldn't reach the middle part with a cotton stick and alcohol to get rid of the um, the scale. And it was also sitting in uh, a clay pot with sphagnum moss. And it was doing great. But I, yeah, I haven't seen any blooms for a while. And I figured it had a lot of new sheath. So it should be able to bloom before long, but nothing happens really. But only today I discover that it's got, it's going to be a mass blooming. On each division there will be blooms that are filling up the sheath, all of the sheath, all over the place here, all the way up here on this one. And this one you can see for yourself, the blackening, a real bud in there, developing nicely and quite fast even. And on this one as well, all the way up here, this dried out sheath is going to burst any minute. But a sad story, sad part, is that neither of the divisions has got any live roots anymore. Since I transitioned all of them into semi-hydro. So instead of dying, it decided to live on by creating a couple of butts. I know, visible scale to the eye, and there will be some new growth there. And uh, Yeah, along with the growth, you all know that there will be some more roots. But what I did wrong, I tried to give this one a water reservoir all the way from the beginning. It smelled like something was dying on the shelf. Sour, really. So, I'm going to stick to the idea of not putting any water reservoir to any of the newly transitioned Kitlay orchids. Never, ever. Now we're gonna see, in a short while, some blooms on these guys. Orange, lovely splashes. And this one is another example. The lovely Kitlea hybrid. White, background color, 
two of the blooms with purple spots on them. I didn't give this guy a reservoir. Not yet, but the holes are there already, ready to be watered, but no reservoir. And, well, it's a little bit difficult to see through the this frosted one, but uh, the roots are a little bit greenish. They are still alive. I only flush this one every once in a while. And you can tell by, the, by its leaves, they are still really sturdy and not wrinkled at all. So it's better to wait with a reservoir and there will be some new roots coming here from this new cane. I was a little bit reluctant to transition this one, but I had to. It had too far too much scale, which could spread. So, benefit on being transitioned into semi-hydro one. Here's another cacao. I had to divide this one as well. The reliable bloomer, it's proven itself to be. This one from Lucke. Cattleya Harrisonniae, Volcano Queen times Bino. Gorgeous light pink color with a yellow and white center. Yeah. It's been blooming for me in my care a couple of times since I got it. So it blooms at least twice a year. And this is the newest part. And this one is coming out with a little new shoot there, as well as a, yeah, yet another one here. And a little eye there. So this one will recover in no time. But what I did do, you can see all the dead roots here. I gave this one a water reservoir far too early. I think all of the roots in there are dead, but there will be a lot of new roots. Well, a few alive here. Yeah, really. But who knows how, yeah, they are branching. Look, this short root is branching out. So, well, this one is going to recover. It's going to be a great orchid again. A full one with a lot of new growth. Perhaps a mass blooming. And the division. The old, oldest part is here. Also creating a lovely new growth there. Quite, um, quite strong new growth. But this one, I, I was thinking about giving this away to the lottery. To my orchid society, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm not really sure that this one is scale free 100% yet. And scale seems to be liking it better in a drier condition as the bark, especially to the surface. So, and it didn't matter if I reported this one into bark. <laughs> It dumped its root system anyway, so I might as well just clean this guy off again and put it into semi-hydroponics as well. So, it didn't matter. It dumped its root system anyway. So, into semi-hydro you go some other day. And here's yet another example on a new transition without... Well, it had a water reservoir, unfortunately. I was stupid enough to give this one a kind of shallow water reservoir. My, maybe I should give you its name, Ketlea Gascaliana, but it says Cerulea, but it's not. It's the uh, common variety, the purple one, pink purple one. Yeah, but it's uh, producing a new growth down there and some new root growth up there branching roots so and this one is still plump even though it's been transitioned from bark and treated this badly with a water reservoir far too early and everything but maybe there are still a few roots in there alive so uh yeah it's starting to smell it started to smell like an old well rotting and started to smell sour so i Reckoned it was this one and I I poured out the water reservoir immediately. And now it's been drying out, so it's doing better. And when I see some new roots coming down there, going down there, I will start to 
uh, leave a little bit of water to to the bottom. And she's sitting here in the very best spot, the highest light I can possibly ever give any of my orchids. So you better bloom. <laughs> I love his blooms as well as the scent it provides. So gorgeous. Next up on the table is this one. Uh, I got this one at the same time as I got the other one, the Gascaliana. This one is Cattleya Alchimeda and it's a cross between Cattleya Labiada and Cattleya Gascaliana. Yeah, what happened to this one? Yeah, it was also sitting in bark, doing really well. The pot was um, getting a little bit too uh, small for it. And I just figured, well, give him a good water reservoir from the start. Yay. <sighs> Does this one smell bad or not? It really is. It still is, shall we say. And the scale came immediately when I poured out the water reservoir and let it dry out to the surface. Yeah. See, in between where the new growth is coming out down there, it will have to be removed. I sprayed her again today with my leaf gloss. But new roots coming, new growth coming. If I get rid of the scale before they eat and snag the whole new growth off, there will be a future for this gal as well. This one is going to be taken care of immediately. Peel off the white stuff here before it gets to the new growth too much. So now it's gone, I think. It's easier when it's grown a little bit uh, larger. Yeah. Not a good idea with a water reservoir. <laughs> and here's one of my healthiest orchids, my Ketelea orchids. LC, Leila Ketelea Elegance. She's been precision as well, as you can see, into semi-hydro. After that, she started to be a little bit, uh, there are some knuckles to the leaves, a little bit uh, uneven leaves, you can see. Not so smooth and shiny anymore. She started to lack humidity and hydration. But as the good grower and vigorous grower she is, <laughs> look, immediately starting on a new root system for us. I also gave this one, as I said, <laughs> a water reservoir from the beginning and everything is dead in there. I will have to give this gal a proper clean up. Well, these roots are down there and not so brittle. I will give her a proper clean up. And she's been blooming for me twice, so yeah, I sure don't want to miss the blooming this year. But she was covered with scale and I had to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, as you know, you know the drill by now. Here we have another example of an orchid with a water reservoir. From the beginning. This one is Brassucatanti Gyrac Five Star. Yeah, it's not a huge one. Medium sized Cattleya type orchid. Really, really good grower from curling. Bloomed for me for the first time not so long ago, last autumn, here. Beautiful, beautiful bloom. But anyway, I, yeah, she was in bark and perlite, I believe, and a lot of pummies. Yeah, a lot of pummies as well. So I just figured, why not put her as well into semi-hydro? So, so, yeah, I seem to forget to water them, so. But this one has got a shallow root system. So, uh, her roots were only this far down. So, the water reservoir didn't do any harm to this one and to her roots. Yeah, maybe a few, but uh, most part still alive. As you can see, no wrinkles to the leaves. Everything looks so nice and tidy on this one. 
is a really, really good specimen. Well grown. And last but not least, an orchid. Shy. I believe for a while that I was going, going to lose. Yeah. A lovely species, Cattleya. Cattleya ludemaniana semi-alba. She bloomed about uh, yeah, Christmas time one year ago. And then she caught scale, of course. She was sitting in bark. And I transitioned her. Uh, she didn't create any new roots. She wasn't doing all that great to semi-hydro either. And she um, didn't bloom, of course. And the scale got to her real good. So I had to take her out of the pot and I cleaned her up, her root system and everything. Uh, unfortunately, with a little bit of alcohol to the potion. <laughs> uh, what was I thinking about? Really stupid of me. And all of her roots stayed off. So, And I cleaned her up, put her in this far too small container. And now it's time for her to be put it up into a little bit larger one so the roots will go down somewhere <laughs> instead of become aerial which we really don't need but she seems to be uh, yeah making it so to speak there's still there's still some material inside these canes so she's gonna do a full recovery so I'm gonna boil a bit of lecta and get started. So guys, um, that was all I was about to show you this time. I've had a lot of work, uh, a lot of uh, <laughs> sleepless nights, <laughs> going over my orchids, dividing, rinsing, perching. But um, slowly but surely, we are now starting to see some progress and some good results on my action. Okay, thank you so much for watching guys and until I see you next time, take care and talk to you soon. Bye bye!